Hello everyone, I'm Fred Rowley and I'm speaking to you on behalf of the International Actuarial Association, the IAA. I'm here to tell you about a short series of virtual seminars that the IAA is presenting in partnership with A2II, the Access to Insurance Initiative. We really hope you'll be able to join us. The actuarial profession was invented over 250 years ago to measure and manage the financial risks of insurance companies and pension funds, and we're still going strong. So it's no surprise that the profession has contributed substantially to the design and operation of the insurance supervisory frameworks we see today. We'll be presenting three 90-minute sessions over a three-week period. They'll feature interactions between actuaries and our special guests, some very skilled and experienced insurance supervisors from around the world. They'll be talking about three key topics in risk-based financial management and risk-based supervision. We'll be talking about the ORSA, the core tool of risk-based supervision. We'll be talking about actuarial reports and how to get the best value from them. And we'll be talking about proportionate risk assessment and showing you the IAA risk tool in action. Why those topics? Well, studies show that a strong financial services sector, including a range of insurance services, contributes to the growth, stability and resilience of any economy. But to get the best outcomes, we must be confident that insurers will be able to keep their promises. Naturally, governments and supervisors want to ensure a high level of security, but they all have to respond to their own circumstances and in a way that suits them best in their own economies. As a result, supervisory models come in all shapes and sizes. Some are more risk sensitive than others, some are market consistent, some are more resource intensive, and so on. Despite the variety of approaches, all those systems address the detection, measurement and management of risk. All of them need to get the best achievable security for the customer and minimise the costs of any rectification that may be needed. And all of them need to manage the costs of supervising insurance within a tight budget. The International Association of Insurance Supervisors, the IAIS, has done a lot of great work to provide guidance and help them achieve those things. IAIS guidance reflects the best of modern thinking and it tends to emphasise systems that placed first-line accountability for prudent management firmly with boards and executives. Let's briefly look at why. Experience shows that company failures often result from actions taken or not taken by companies facing risks which are quite usual in their industry. In many cases, adequate risk management processes weren't in place or simply didn't operate effectively. And just looking at the balance sheet as the risks emerged has meant waiting until the impact is visible before we can act, which cuts down response times. As a result, modern supervisory systems aim to stimulate the development and effective operation of risk management systems inside companies. This also allows them to be tailored to each company's business activities and doing it this way also places the first line accountability for prudent management and a lot of the cost on the companies themselves. But establishing that accountability inside companies changes the nature of what is expected from a supervisor. In broad terms, the emphasis has shifted in the past few decades, shifted away from asking supervisors to monitor companies from the outside, relying on standardized financial reporting, mainly after the event, and shifted towards asking supervisors to understand the outputs and assess the effectiveness of a risk management system operated by the company, with a particular focus on how management and boards are responding to the signals it gives. This important shift means that supervisors need quite a different skill set to oversee companies. Supervisors need to use the high-level outputs of risk management systems to evaluate the responses of board and management. Supervisors can't expect to be expert themselves in all the risks an insurer may face. Some may be completely new risks. Even so, 
they at least need to know that all relevant risks have been identified, assessed and addressed in some way within the company's risk management framework. To help with this, boards often consider the opinions and recommendations of a range of, risk, of qualified risk experts. Much of the work assessing insurance risks and profitability will be addressed in actuarial reports. These reports may cover pricing, solvency, capital adequacy or other aspects of the company's financial condition. The complete range of risks and the systems used to manage them may be further condensed into the company's ORSA report, its own risk and solvency assessment. The ORSA report contains the company's own assessments of its risks, its solvency and the adequacy of its capital. It will also consider the timing and circumstances in which it might need fresh capital. Two of our three modules cover actuarial reports and the ORSA. Our third topic deals with practical risk-based supervision. Supervisors today want attention to be focused on managing the risks that are most significant to the company, but they also want to ensure that their own efforts and expenditure are concentrated in the right place. This means focusing on those companies where residual risks could have the most material impact on their economy. In general, large companies with large residual risk should get the most attention, and small companies or those with low residual risk should get less. But how do you make those decisions? Supervisors need to form their own views, not based solely on a company's view of itself, but taking a stance of probing and challenging in order to decide how much trust to extend. That view should go beyond the point in time position of the company into an impression of how well that company is managing itself over successive reporting periods and into the future. The last of our modules aims to show in a simple case how even a simple tool can help to address some of these issues in practice. In closing, we hope our seminars can help you increase your understanding of the companies you deal with. We'll let you hear how our experts think and interact with them. We'll aim to make it practical and to keep it simple. Of course, the industry isn't simple, but the main principles of risk management can be expressed simply and are based on practical skills. Lastly, we also hope you may even enjoy the interactive exercises and quizzes that we plan to include with each seminar session. So that's all from me. Thank you for watching this brief introduction to our seminar mini-series. We hope you'll find them interesting and valuable. Bye for now.